What's good guys? We are live in Mexico and a ban list has just dropped this weekend. So now they're on the on the fly, ban list reaction and analysis of what's gonna happen. So there's a YCS next week already, the week of the ban list dropping, YCS Raleigh. What's gonna be good there? How do we approach this new format? So quickly let's go over the changes. In the ban section we got Baron to floor, uh, Link Karibo, Warlord, Savage Dragon, and Summon Limit. Now, quickly for Summon Limit, uh, Anna Spell also went to one, so those two Master Floodgates are out of the way. However, Anna Spell one should probably be most of the side decks. It does mean that Board Breakers are a lot better because a big problem with Board Breakers is often you can deal with the board, but you can't deal with the lingering Floodgates or Floodgates in general. So like Anna Spell, Summon Limit are huge. Uh, cards like Droll still hurt it a lot, and those still exist. And there are other answers we'll get to in a bit. And this is even more emphasized to see Baron and Savage. That means the Snake Eye deck doesn't really have access to Omni Negates, at least not in the current iteration. We'll see if anybody innovates any way to go about that. That's big. That means we may not be fully hand trap dependent for the next format. Now, people could adapt and find ways to still make combos that are way too powerful for Breakers to deal with. And in that case, we still revert back to hand traps. But at the time being, I think you can get away with board Breakers a lot more often than you could you know, in the format that Mexico and before was played in. Now, some other important things to talk about is Link Rebo being banned may not seem like the hugest deal because in theory you replace it with a Linkwished Anima. However, what this does do is it stops the Heat Soul lines. So one big thing you could do in Fire was make Sunlight Wolf and then Karibo add back off Sunlight Wolf and then turn that to Heat Soul. Heat Soul draw two uh, or draw one and then put in Grateful Whale then Whale Pop, revive Heat Soul, draw again. But now you can't make the Heat Soul with Anima. So what you have to do instead is use an extra body to make IP and then IP plus Sunlight Wolf into Heat Soul. So that does still work. But now you can make Appalooza, but you don't get to go Heat Soul. Or if you go eat Heat Soul, you go IP into Heat Soul and you shorter body to make Appalooza. So it actually is a rather large hit because especially if you're getting playing against board breakers, the two extra hand traps that you were getting off of the two draws of Heat Soul did make a big difference in, in terms of playing through the field. And as for testing for the, the ultimate dual series, that's what I found a lot with board breakers, was oftentimes you could break the field, it's the hand traps and the floodgates that really make the, the board breaking strategy kind of risky. And then obviously, we'll talk about the versions of Snake Eye that are, are playable. I think the Cash Tira and Synchro version are reduced significantly. Now, there are other good Synchros, but as good as Baron and Savage, probably not. There are some lines you can do with like, make formula, then Metal Marcher and, and level up Synchros that way and do some cool stuff. Maybe it uh, involves Cubit Pitch to get Nemesis Corridor. Nemesis Corridor gets you uh, Colossus, which is a card that went to one in this ban list. You could innovate, but all these require obviously an excess amount of bricks in the extra deck and in the main deck. The other Snake Eye deck didn't need. So I think ultimately the Fire King deck is just more suited to, like naturally to stick within its normal combos. Now obviously you have a little bit of a difference with again the Karibo, but it's a lot more minor of a hit. It's not like your entire end board is hit, whereas the Pure Snake Eye deck feels like now it's just a shell of itself with IP uh, into SP and then Apo being its only real plays. Now there is a world that's enough, but if people are playing board breakers, then no, I'm not, I don't think I don't think that'll I'll get by. And especially in an open format where before there's any standard set of lists, not gonna fly with just a, a minimal board. You know, we can always reassess as the format progresses and there's more of a, a standard list to play around. But until that happens, I probably wouldn't be happy with just that board. Yeah, so that's the, I guess the ban section. Now, in terms of how good I think the Fire King Snake Eye deck will be, I think the hit to Karibo is a meaningful hit, but it is not enough to dethrone it from being the best deck. I think that is where you want to be in terms of the dominant deck. If you're expecting to build a side deck, build a main deck, Fire King Snake Eye should be the deck to beat, should be also the deck to try and test. Now, of course, there are other decks that are still playable. I think like a board with Despy deck is more well positioned than ever, again, because Anna's building one, uh, as well as something like Voiceless, still on hit, deck's fine. That's what I'm thinking, but okay, let, let, let's continue on. What are the cards were limited here? And I'm going to the top of my head, so if I miss one, apologies, but it's probably not relevant if I miss it. A big one is Thunder Dragon Colossus went to one. So this card should not come back, it is a floodgate. I, I was happy with the rest, with all the bands, and especially should have been banned, but to one is still a step in the right direction. Colossus is bad because, well, it's a floodgate. I'm just not thrilled about any floodgate being legal. The power level of Colossus is like, a little bit lower in theory because now if you get to SP, you can out it a little bit easier than before. Before the only thing too to kill stuff was Cerberus, and Cerberus does not beat Colossus because it has destruction immu uh, like immunity. So I'm still not thrilled about it coming back, and it's ease of access via Cards like Nemesis Corridor. Corridor being searchable off any deck that can go keep it pitch, which is level 4 genetic synchro, and you can kind of see where we're getting here. Will it see a play immediately? Probably not, but will it 
see play at some point in the game's uh, future. Absolutely. Uh, and if you're looking for an end piece to your combo, the cost of one or two extra deck spots and then one or two main deck spots as well, then yeah, like Colossus is a fine option. And the other option there is Arch Nemesis Protos, another card that just went to one that I absolutely detest, has no reason to be uh, legal again. Calling Fire is nasty, Calling Dark is pretty good versus most decks as well, especially when you know what they're playing. Now, obviously, this requires a little more setup, but three add different attributes is not that crazy. And this card is technically searchable off the Nemesis Flag. Nemesis Flag is a level two pyro that can summon itself by returning a banished monster back into the deck, and then once return, add a Nemesis card from deck to hand. So you can add this uh, off Bonfire or off Infernal Flame Banshee, a card that's been a uh, talk of the town for a bit. You know, any deck that makes rank fours, now you can turn that into the Arch Nemesis and, and call Fire or Dark. You already have the Fire and Field Flag of the Fire and that'd be fantastic, game's probably over. But to be fair, people already could have been doing this because Arch Nemesis Escados is the same thing, but for types, not for attributes. Uh, and you can still search it off flag. So people already could have been doing that, but they searched Escados instead, called Pyro. And like in the Snake Eye Mirror, that's obviously game still anyways. The fact that that wasn't being played, it's like some of us that this combo probably isn't worth it, but there's also always the chance that everyone just completely missed if that was a viable option. That being said, right, like if we do transition to a board breaker format or board breakers are everywhere, then the, the spot of a couple cards in your main and extra or this type of combo that can punish like that is worth it. And you could just like side in two flags and, or three flags and Escados or a Protos or whatever. And it, if you get to combo, it acts as like one extra layer and it's the floodgate layer, like the Sanctum. So <laughs> uh, I'm giving this recommendation because like it's an option, but I obviously don't enjoy that for Yu-Gi-Oh! and I don't want to play against it like ever. Very frustrating way to lose. Level of counterplay is horrific. You need hand traps for it. Going to two, the only one I think is Curly Delicious Memory to two. If there are any more, they weren't relevant, but Delicious to two is okay. We've seen some people play Pearly and it's doing okay. Uh, the target protection from Street is really good against Fire. And then Noir is still broken, but is that good enough to make it compete? Honestly, I doubt it. The second Delicious Memory still doesn't mean it's guaranteed off, off my friend. So the buff, while is meaningful, is not like a huge difference. If it went to three rather, then we could see way more uh, reasoning behind like Curly being a dominant force. To three, we did have some options that are not are pretty important. So Destiny or Malicious, I kind of like was mind blown when they uh, when it did the initial reaction for. All right, so my phone overheated <laughs> while recording the video. So I think where I ended off is about to go into the cards that went to three. Uh, and now the biggest one, and something that I reacted to pretty strongly in the initial balance reaction. And then at three, Mally. No, no, no. Every time that card is at three, it proves to be a problem and goes back to two, right? Like in the immediate sense, what decks would use it? Heroes, which is not super meta relevant, and tier. Uh, and maybe the Lightstorm deck that comes out in a week or so. And that's like some viability, but it's not crazy. Uh, one thing is with level 4, 200 plus level 6 Mali, you're not making Baron anymore, which is a huge difference. Um, that's a cool Chaos Angel play though. And then you still have the Mali left over to do other stuff. Maybe that'll be uh, worth looking into. Who knows what to do. Maybe you can do some rank 6 pile with like Thunder cards and Mali. Maybe Bishal Thunder. Ooh, Bishal Thunder sounds kind of clean. Uh, it's probably like just the Rogue deck. That, that's probably not that, not that bad with uh, Colossus Legal. Yeah, so what else is going to three? Engage. So Engage the three does actually have a meaningful difference. We saw at the beginning of this one that a lot of people gravitated towards some Sky Striker, Board Breaker, uh, going second almost Sky Striker deck. And Engage was crucial to that. It was nasty, search enough thrust, very high power. Now two to three doesn't make a huge difference in terms of consistency because it's more like going to five to six thanks to thrust. But then being able to thrust for a second Engage is, is, is crazy or like thrust something else. As far as a pure Sky Striker goes, I don't think that will be good. Pure Striker keeps popping up again and it's this anti-meta deck of very specific formats. And maybe we'll miss, like I'll miss the circumstances it requires and never really be too attuned with Sky Striker. So maybe there, there does come a time where Sky Striker can be this rogue, like correct pick for an event. I think Sky Striker engage and any deck that really wants to play heavy spell counts or break boards like Thrust, Talents, Change of Heart type of cards is, uh, is very real. And it's a threat we should be looking out for <laughs> and it's funny now we're gonna get engaged with classes again. Method of old rivalry of striker versus Thunder Dragon. When the balance is announced, I sit next to the pile. Oops, bumped the off button. But yeah, when the balance was announced, I was sitting next to the pile and, we, and I joked to him. Um, like after we re did a, each did our reactions. Like, yeah, well, uh, we're back to our old rivalry days where he was the striker guy and I was the Thunder guy. 
that's engaged to three. Now there are two other uh, cards on the that I'm pretty sure. Harp Horror was one. Harp Horror, I think the difference between three and one is minuscule. Uh, you have better chance of milling it, which matters if you're playing like Lightsworn Orcus or uh, anything in the middle. But I guess like my, or tier Orcus, I guess like my main position would be Lightsworn right now because that's what's just coming out. You know, is, is, is Orcus really strong enough? Like those negates were good. I guess now IP into SP is better than what the options were before. The interrupts are kind of similar to uh, Snake Eye, I guess, in some in some capacity. With like this very removal heavy base. You do have some negates with Crescendo. I don't think it will do anything, but honestly, I don't really have a great explanation why. It might be a decent option, especially like as a rogue choice. And with better like other engines to mix it with, maybe now it can, it can function. And the last card is Teratops. It's a Teratop, very, very powerful card. And we have seen it go to three in Master Duel. I predicted this card to go to two. I thought they'd uh, do one at a time, but it went to three. All right, they got me. Um, is there a chance it gets hit again? Yes, because this card doesn't start a chain, so it's really good into, into interrupts. And you can put up two bodies quite easily. Two level threes is not the best, but it's still solid. Two level three sets up Cherubini plays, which is a good card. Uh, rank threes are okay. Gossip Shadow uh, to play through interrupts. Or you can go into Alley card and the Ghost Trick combo like you do in Curly. Or like if you're playing Ghost Trick Curly, you could just play the Ghost Trick cards and then the Teratops is like if you draw it, then you don't have to burn the first two level ones on the F-Zero. You just F-Zero there, get the trap that makes two Noirs and do that. It'd probably win more, but a viable option. I think that like right now it's not crazy. But again, just like just like the engage combo, it's it's two free bodies and no normal summon required. Very minimal engine, doesn't require a ton of bricks. The stat lines on the cards are solid. They're not brilliant, but they're alright. It's good. I mean these cards are playable and we we, we can't see them play. These are like actual meaningful releases. Um, but when that happens, there's always a risk that it's a bit too much and uh, it needs to go back on the list. I don't think that's the case with Teratop, at least not an immediate. And yeah, I think that's all the cards. So final thoughts, where do we go? Well, I think Fire King is the deck to beat. And I think the biggest shift is board breakers a lot better. And I think with that type of thing, I think Droll is gonna be well positioned. Droll's way better versus the Fire King deck than it was the Snake Eye deck. And then I think Droll also pairs well with the board breakers. Because you're able to make them end on a weaker field, it means breaking the board is significantly be easier. And it also means if you're expecting to play against board breakers, Droll is one of the best ways to stop them from pummeling you. And like in a deck like the Snake Eye deck, if you can't kill them, the follow-up from the, the, the player went first will probably be too much to, to win. You see, I'm looking at Droll to be a, a huge card for this upcoming YCS and Raleigh, and I've considered playing Crystal Beast again, who knows, maybe I will, but I think Droll would just obliterate me. Like, Droll would ruin me so bad. Other board breakers to keep an eye on that weren't really popular before, Soul Release and Shadow Fusion to send Ariel uh, are both better now as we're playing more Fire King decks and uh, is more graveyard suited. Uh, but again, we could see Pure Snake Eye still pop out of nowhere with some other ways to make strong infields. And that's what I expect from YCS Raleigh in the next coming weeks. Now, there will be a new set in a short bit. Uh, we got Legacy of Destruction. I will probably make an actual proper tier list video for staples and for decks post that coming out and we'll have a better understanding of the format so it's no longer first impressions and I can give you guys some proper guidance. So stay tuned for that probably a couple weeks from now as we keep learning. But good luck to everyone going to YCS Raleigh. I'll see you all there. Peace.